Alright, so this is the uh, video that I keep promising you guys to uh, review how to hook up a circuit with the multimeter so that you can uh, measure current, you can measure voltage for your lab practical. So when you get up to your, your uh, station, uh, the station will have with it a piece of paper that just says build this circuit, uh, use resistors R1, R2, R3, whatever, and uh, then you'll have a little cup, and uh, I just have the bags here that you guys were dealing with that's going to have a whole bunch of resistors uh, in it. The resistors themselves are not are going to be taped up because you now hopefully know how to read the resistor code. Uh, so they'll be taped up so you don't actually know what the resistor is. So the whole point of the lab practical is to make your uh, circuit and measure current, measure voltage, and calculate what the resistance is supposed to be. All the resistors are that 5% tolerance, so I am going to uh, grade on percent error on this. If you are within the 5% tolerance for your resistors, then you don't have to worry about your grade. You're going to get full credit. Now, in uh, the, the exercise we've been doing in class, you've also been using a 9-volt battery. You're going to use the big power supply for this lab, mainly because you'll see here in a second, the voltage and the current from this is not very constant. It doesn't give you very good readings. So you'll use the actual power supply, which is going to be very constant and help you out much, much more. Uh, so you'll get a set of wires. In this case, I just have the wires that I pulled out of one of those boxes. I have our resistors. I have the multimeter. The multimeter will already be set up, but remember that you have red on right, black in the middle, and uh, I think we're good to go. So let's start off with a series circuit. In a series circuit, let's just pick out three random resistors here, okay. and uh, to make a series circuit, we know that the series circuit has to have a single loop that everything is on. So to make this circuit, I'm just going to start connecting resistors to each other with our wires. And uh, remember the colors of these wires mean nothing, so it's just a matter of your preference on whatever color wire you would like to use. Okay, I need one more wire. All right, here we go. So I have a single loop that has all three resistors on it. If I hook this up to the battery, there we go. And now current is actually running in this thing. Right? Remember, you don't want to keep these on too long because current is going to flow. It's going to make things heat up really quick. So we have current coming out of the battery, going through the green wire, coming through this resistor, into the other green wire, second resistor, into the red wire, third resistor, yellow wire, back to the battery. So this is a series circuit that's got all three resistors on it. So let's start off with measuring voltage. So if you want to measure voltage, remember that you uh, will need to make sure you turn it to the right setting, and you cannot blow a fuse when you're measuring voltage, assuming that you have it on the right setting. So if you uh, click it three times to the left, right, where it says 20 volts there. All I have to do is take our two probes, and now we're going to measure the voltage for this resistor. Measuring voltage is just a matter of placing it on either side. All I'm doing is making sure that the uh, metal of the probe is touching either side of the resistor, and we're reading 1.93. Fairly constant. We got 1.93, okay? And if we come up here to this one, you want to make sure you keep straight which one's R1, R2, R3. Okay, this one's getting 0.89 volts, 0.89s. So we got 1.93 and 0.89. And then measure our last one, and this one's getting the most of it, 6.31 or 6.30. So we can actually already tell that that one is going to have to be the, the largest resistor because it is getting most of the voltage. And if you were to actually look at the color code, it is orange, orange, brown, which we know is the 330, which is the largest one that I have. Okay, we're going to turn this off because we, if we mess around with the circuit while this is on, we have a chance of blowing a fuse. So now here's how you measure current. Voltage is the easy one. Voltage, you have your circuit set up. You just come in and touch on either side. For current, on the other hand, you have to physically break the circuit. I always say that you have to have one more wire, and here's what's going to go on. Uh, my suggestion to you is to build the circuit and then break it. In a series circuit, we know it's going to have the same current all the way through, so it doesn't matter where we break it. I'm going to just choose this spot, and here we go. I broke it. The, cert the current is no longer running. The circuit is no longer running. So I'm going to take one extra wire and put that on our resistor here. And now 
we have ourselves a hole. This hole is not connected. We don't have anything connected to it. The circuit is not running. It's not sharing any kind of current. It's not producing any current. So we're going to put our uh, two leads for the ammeter, for the current reading, in this hole. Remember that if we hook it up wrong, it's just going to give us a negative, so you can just drop that negative. So now, let's visualize where the current is going. Now we have lots of wires here. We got currents coming out of the battery going into green. Green goes into our first resistor, which goes into our second resistor. Now when it comes out the white wire, it's going to actually go into the multimeter through the red port comes out the black wire, and then finishes out the circuit by going to our third resistor and back up. Measure current on this, we're going to do it three times, but we're going to do it three times to the right, in the one that says 200 milliamps. And right now we got 19.2. 19.2, and this is milliamps. Notice how it already changed to 19.1. This is the reason why we're not going to use the battery for the, lab, uh, for the exercise, we're going to use the voltage supply. So, 19.2, that's milliamps, okay? So if we have 19.2 milliamps, then that's actually 0 0.0192 amps. Okay, so we have 0 0.192 amps. We have to make that conversion from milliamps to amps before you do any kind of calculation. Now we'll take our voltage from one of them, and I do believe that one of them was 1.92 volts, right? And we know that V is equal to I times R. V is equal to I times R. So to calculate what that resistance is, do V divided by I, and if you take 1.92 volts and divide it by uh, 0.0192 amps, you would get a resistor value of 100 ohms which is this guy right here, and this exa is exactly 100 ohms. And so you would know you did that correct, and you would do it for the other two uh, resistors as well, and you would get those values, and you would come up with a very, very close. Okay, so that was our series circuit, so now we're gonna do our parallel circuit. Uh, parallel is a little bit harder, and if you're not uh, careful, then here's really uh, how you're gonna blow a fuse inadvertently, and it could be that you're hooking everything up right, but if things start touching each other, then uh, they can start blowing fuses because you'll have weird connections. So we know in a parallel section, each individual part is going to get its own section. It's going to have its own connection to the battery. Having lots of wires going around that can be really, really weird or uh, just look really messy. So the best way that I know how to do it is make use of the fact that you have different colored wires. So I've got two wires here that are red, and I'm going to go and use both of those red wires to hook up this resistor. There we go. There's going to be one of my branches. And these two are going to connect uh, to something here in just a second. The other one I'm going to use, uh, let's say I'm going to use these yellow ones. So this was a resistor. Now I'm only doing two here. It could be three that you get. And uh, now what do we do with these two ends? Well we know that in a parallel section the current branches off. So what we're going to do with these ends is we're going to connect them together. This is going to be our point of junction where the current splits to go off to either direction. So now we have two junction points on either side of both resistors, and they're both where the yellow and the red wires hook together. Okay, now what's going to happen with the battery? The battery is usually pictured as being the end, but I'm going to hook it up kind of in the center of it just because it's really on its own branch too. And I'm going to use these two white wires. So I'm going to hook the wire wires up to the battery and now these wires are going to come all the way back to our junction. So what does that mean? Well when everything hooks up, let's follow the current. Okay, now everything's hooked up. What's going to happen? Well it comes out of the white wire, you know, it comes out of the battery through the white wire. When it comes here, it's going to have a choice to make. It's not a physical choice, it's not a mental choice that the electrons are doing. But part of it's going to go up to the red section and go to this one. Part of it's going to go to the yellow section and come to this one. When it comes back over to this, it's going to come back together and then make it its way back into the white section to where the battery is. So everything is hooked up, and we know that on a parallel section, these things should have the same voltage. Now we know this is real life as well, so we're going to want to make sure that we... Uh, measure both voltages. Okay, so we have our voltmeter here. 
We're going to make it three clicks over to the left like usual. And we're going to take our leads and again we're going to hook them up on either side making sure there's good connection. And here we get 8.32. 8.32. Okay. Uh, and then over here we're going to do the same thing. Hook them up make sure we have good connection. And we get 8.25. So they're really, really close to each other. You would want to use the actual numbers that you're measuring, not the ones uh, that they theoretically should be. So we have 8.32 and 8.25, showing that they are really, really close to each other. Okay? Well, to measure current, I'm going to switch that off. To measure current, again, we have to have at least one extra wire, and we're going to physically break the circuit to introduce where our ammeter is going to go. The best way to do it is to take your resistor and break the circuit. There we go. Here's our break. This is the hole that the ammeter or the me current measuring device is going to have to go into. So we're going to grab an extra uh, color. This is the green one. And now between the green and the red is where our ammeter is going to go. It's going to measure the current specifically from this resistor. So we'll take our two current probe leads. Hook them up, and we're going to switch it over to the current section. And we get 36.7, 36.7, 36.6 uh, milliamps. Remember that we want to convert that to amps. Don't leave that on too long, and we're going to put the circuit back to the way it was. We're going to take out the green one and put it back in. You can do the same thing with the yellow. We'll break the circuit right out there at the resistor. We'll add our green wire in. Hook this up. It gets pretty mechanical the more times you do it. Now there's our hole between the green and the yellow. We're going to switch this on. And we're getting 53.1, 53.0. Okay, it changes pretty rapidly because we're using this battery and not an actual voltage source. Okay, you know, again, make that transfer over to amps. And then do your calculations just like I showed you on the series side, where you would do voltage equals current times resistance, solve for resistance. This one should be 150, and this one should be 220. So we uh, did our measurements. I said them out loud if you would like to go and check to see if this one comes out to be 220 and this one comes out to be 150. You can practice your calculations on that. So this is how you would hook up your voltage probe and your current probe for both series and parallel. Um, good luck.